I've driven the fastest cars on Earth. I'm Big Daddy Don Garlitz. Maximum power requires maximum compression. Restore is a great product that increases compression in high mileage engines. Maximize power and performance in your car's engine with Restore. You know, a lot of people always ask me, what got you interested in cars? I guess that goes way back into the 30s. I was a real young kid, and my dad had the Model T that he drove down from New Jersey in 1927. It was just parked down in the woods. It didn't run anymore. And my brother and I spent weeks, months, cranking that engine over, but I was really captivated by the mechanical part about it. And from that day forward, I've always liked engines and cars and anything to do with them. The reason that I really liked drag racing was because you didn't bump into one another. In, in Tampa, where I grew up, uh, originally I was helping a guy that had a stock car. He had a 39 Ford and we painted it all up real pretty and it was pretty fast. And so one of the older guys just bumped him over the wall. That got rid of him for that race. I didn't want nothing else to do with it. If that's how it was in round track racing, that wasn't for me. Where drag racing was different. Two cars contested the issue side by side. One won, one lost. It wasn't about bumping a guy over the wall. Well, the first actual drag race took place on the streets in Tampa, and I just got my 44 two-door sedan, and I pulled up to the stoplight on Florida Avenue, and one of my buddies that was in the high school with me had just got his brand new 1949 Chevy coupe and it was a standard stick and it was a fast little coupe and he says let's race and I didn't know what he was actually talking about he says when the light turns green we're just talking back and forth through the windows you know no air conditioning he said step on it go as hard as you can and we shot out from the light went out about 200 feet and the Chevy beat me but that was my first actual race and I really loved it even though I lost and then the first official race was then in Zephyr Hills later in 1950. Yeah, I was up, went up to Zephyr Hills and we had the first race up there and I was first in line that morning. And it was just about 18 or 20 of us guys got the city fathers of Zephyr Hills to let us use the uh, old abandoned Army Air Corps training field. So uh, I got number one put on the door of my car, which is kind of poetic because I later became number one. For, for the whole world in drag racing. But that particular day, I was just number one because I was first in line. I didn't beat anybody, but I had a really good time racing up and down the drag strip against all the guys. But I came home with that car and I still had the number on my door. And my mother looked out there, she was sitting on the front porch when I pulled in the yard and she said, what's that number, you been racing? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, come in the house, I'm gonna get the strap. I don't want you racing. And my stepfather was sitting there in the swing next to her. He said, Helen, leave the boy alone. If he wants to race, let him race. And so race I did. In the beginning, I just raced here in Florida and I knew all the guys in Florida, but none of them were really famous in the United States. And But we'd read about all these different guys in drag news in the different parts of the country. When we started traveling around, my wife and I racing at these different tracks and meeting these guys, it was really exciting, you know, meeting people like Sarah Postoy and uh, the Speed Sport Roadster crew, Cook and Bedwell, John Bradley, uh, Bob Sullivan, all of these were famous names because you read about them in the drag news. And now all of a sudden I was at the events with them we're staying in the same hotels, eating in the same restaurants, and racing at the same drag strips. And it was a very exciting time for Don Garlitz and his wife, believe me. The first time in my career when I realized I was really going fast was the day at Brooksville when I went 176 miles an hour and I got out of that car at the end and I said, that was a ride. Because the fastest I had been to that point was 
155 and I'd went over 21 miles an hour faster on a given run and you could tell that it was faster and uh, I was really excited about it because we'd made all these changes to the car and we knew it was going to go fast but we didn't know it was going to go that fast. One thing about it, remember when we were driving the early cars, that was the latest state of the art, and they were going as fast as we'd ever gone, so we thought each car was more exciting and faster than the one before, so we never thought of them as being slow, like you get in one of them today and you ride down the drag strip, which I've done lots of times in the older cars, and it's just like, ho-hum, it's another run, you know, but, but you know, not like the 300 or even the 250 mile an hour runs. But they were very dangerous. Those cars did not have the safety equipment on them that the modern cars do. And if you crashed one of those older cars, it had a real good chance of getting killed. When we, when we ran 200 miles an hour, we were still on the little three, what they call three-point roll cages, which was a hoop over your head and one brace, which later they changed that to five and then to six-point because uh, the cars were going so fast they needed more attaching points than that to stay on the car. You know, when people ask me what were your best moments in drag racing, it's really hard to pick one particular moment out because there's a couple of them that are really stand out. I could tell you was the, the day I ran 250 miles an hour in Ontario and cinched the world championship. I mean, that was a great moment. But then it's, it's hard to beat the 323 mile an hour run at Gainesville in front of all my fans at 71 years of age. You know, that, that was an exciting moment. It took my breath away. It, but then, of course, when I ran the 200 at uh, Great Meadows in 1964 and told Hot Rod Magazine and NHRA, I will run 200 on this run and set the record. Just like, you know, Babe Ruth used to point into the stands where he was going to knock the ball. Uh, it wasn't very often that people could do that, but in that, that was a great moment. But, I mean, there were some other races that were pretty good, not too bad, you know. Like Indy 1984, Art Malone came up here and says, let's get a car out of the museum and go to the Nationals. We took the 81 car out of the museum, put a new engine in it, went to Indy, set top time, and won the race in an old dinosaur. Two old men with an old antique car out of the museum won the race. I mean, that was a great moment. It, it brought me back. It caused me to build a new car and win the world championship two years in a row, 85 and 86. So that was a great moment. And there's bad ones too. You know, I can tell you about the bad moments. The day the car caught on fire at Chester in 1959, June the 20th, nearly burned me to death. Uh, the day at Long Beach, California, when the uh, transmission exploded and cut off part of my right foot. These are bad moments. The wheel stand at Englishtown, I mean, we had the world's fastest car and uh, turned it up on end, up backwards, destroyed the car. The car just slowly and slowly going up and then all of a sudden it kind of took off. And I saw that whole thing happening because he was on a record pass. He was fixing to reset the national record. And if it wasn't for that wheel stand, he would have. Matter of fact, when he got to that... You couldn't have planned that for better publicity. That was much more publicity than winning the race. And uh, <laughs> I didn't like it at the time, but today I like the idea that we did it. You know, I think the two greatest accomplishments in my entire life, the number one, philosophically speaking, would be finding Jesus Christ and then painting the cross on my cow with God as love in it, which has led so many youngsters to the Lord. I mean, this is something that's forever. The second, the mechanical end of it, is that naturally the development of the rear engine car because it saved so many lives, it made the sport so much safer, and we went faster than we ever thought we could go because we were able to lean on the engines harder. But uh, I have been surrounded by some good people, and that makes a lot of difference. They're giving you some good advice, and. Uh, of course, you got to have enough sense to take that advice. I mean, I've given advice to lots of people they don't pay attention to it, and lots of times to their demise. You uh, Sometimes you need to pay attention to somebody, especially if they're older than you, and they're telling you something that they probably know for sure.